Derek, tell us about uh, Tommy Edmond and the development there. Tommy Edmond is going to go at least a week without swinging. He will continue to participate in fielding drills. This makes inevitable and official what was already advertised and that that is he'll start the season on the injured list just running out of time um for that to happen but the bigger thing here is what happens in the next week how he feels um and then if he's able to maintain improvement with uh, how he feels with that swing um, will determine if this is a short-term or a long-term absence. They still don't know, and that will shape their decisions with the roster. Um, absolutely. You know, their call with who is their center fielder um, and how they view center field um, or how they move the roster around it will reflect a lot of what, you know, uh, what they uh, feel about Tommy Edmonds' schedule. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. You know, Victor Scott's done about everything he can to make the case to be on the roster and also be in center field uh, on opening day. But Dylan Carlson's yeah. starting to hit. He's starting to hit. Uh, in mm-hmm. fairness to him, you know, he can't be dismissed. Um, it is going to be really Couple interesting. Back back really good days for him. At yeah, point. yeah. I was just talking about what he's done this month. You know, um, it, it's been good, and I and that should be noted. If we give him a hard time, yeah. you know, you got to you got to note the successes. Um, but the whole Victor Scott thing to me is just going to really be fascinating because it's going to it's going to sort of uh, open up uh, a look into the Cardinals thinking, you know, and mm-hmm. um, what what do they value? Um, is this an opportunity to give themselves a, 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 a true upgrade defensively uh, with a kind of coverage in the outfield they wouldn't have? All due respect to everybody else. Uh, especially when you got Jordan Walker still still in driver's ed, so to speak, learning how to play right field. And um, it also could maybe free you up to play Burleson more in left field if you got a center fielder who can go coast to coast. And also it diversifies the offense. You've, you've written about this and you've written it well. You know, this guy can get on base in ways that nobody else on the team can. He can put yeah. pressure on defense. He can, he can ignite the, a running game that was often missing last season. So – how, how do you think they they weigh those factors against the the sort of the standard thinking of like well he could use some time at AAA? What, it's a fascinating thing. I I'm really looking forward to see what the decision will be. Yeah, you know, the, a lot of the discussion um, is really going to center on once again they're in that decision point, or I guess I guess they're on that fulcrum, right? That they spent a lot of last season there trying to balance it. Do they side with offense in the outfield and take the hit defensively, or do they just double down on defense? Now, they've already made that call in right field. They are going with Jordan Walker, and they're going to allow him to learn on the job over many years. Like Marmol has said that over and over again. This is not improvement that will make him you know, uh, uh, an above-average right fielder this year. It'll be one that makes him an above-average right fielder eventually over the course of multiple years. So they've made that commitment. Um, Elsewhere on the field, Bernie, you know, it still sounds like, even in talking to Marmol today, that they want to put the thumb on the scale of defense. And if they're going to do that, their options really seem to be Scott in center field or Dylan in center field and Donovan in left or Dylan in left. I mean, that seems to be the best defensive group, the trio that they could put together. Carlson is part of both of them. Um, Scott is part of one of them. But you bring in the fact that, like, man, look at the ballparks they're playing at. Dodger Stadium, um, Petco, Bush Stadium, right off the hop, then Arizona. Um, Those are all the first series, right, right away. And then Oakland. Um, you know, there, there, that's a lot of spots where balls that get by go for a while. And we saw that a lot last year, and it doomed them in some ways. It contributed to the pitching problems. It didn't cause them. It contributed to the pitching no problems doubt. they had. And no doubt. They want to try to avoid that. Um, so who does that? I mean, I think you can make a real case that if they just want to make teams haywired, and just give them 
just drive them bad. Like, just go into Dodger Stadium and say, hey, guys, welcome back to Korea. All right, figure out Victor Scott for a week. Just <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. You know, exactly. You, know yep. you guys got jet lag. We're going to go with our jets. And I think there's, you know, my colleague Ben Fredrickson has kind of made the point, and, you know, there's, there's no loss there, right? Like, if he's – if his speed plays and speed plays at any level – and he also has a real knack for getting on base, um, a real feel for the strike zone. Um, you know, if it works out, then it works out. And if it doesn't, then maybe it's only a couple weeks, right? Um, and, again, like we speak about this, uh, and I would need to add a big, 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 huge asterisk in, in highlighter, and that's Lars Newtbar. Um, if he is available and he's making strides each day with the fractured ribs, if he's available – then we know who the left fielder is going to be. And then it becomes, is it Dylan with that time? Or is it, um, is it Victor Scott? It'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, I know what they'll say. And uh, because it's, it's kind of a baseball thing, but I wonder if the Cardinals care about reading the room. Um, there's mm. a lot of excitement with Victor Scott, the second, and it doesn't seem to be anything fluky about it because the things that the thing is making him look very special in spring training are things that are known strengths of his. It's like he's not doing something that's out of the norm. But right. you, I don't have to tell you. You host a chat every week. Uh, you you get roasted on Twitter for no reason because you don't tell fans Sometimes what they want to hear. For a reason. Yeah. Sometimes well, I'm yeah, that's here. true. Yeah, but my I point on myself, but that's sport. Yeah, and, you know, my point, and I, I don't mean to make a speech, but the point is, you know, you have yeah. a guy. It, last year was a total bummer. It was just a downer, demoralizing season. It left everyone just sort of disgusted and mad and sad and all of the above, you know. And they have they have a chance to kind of, you know, just regenerate some enthusiasm for their product and, and introduce some something that truly is exciting and truly different from what they already have on the roster. Um. Ben Fred said it. I've said it. This is an entertainment business. I think Victor mm-hmm. Scott would be good for business. However, yeah, he's got to earn that, though. But if he earns it, wow, it just seems like a typical Cardinal short-sighted, old, like maybe outdated uh, version of thinking, oh, well, we got to get – oh, we, he needs some time, you know. Yeah. I just uh, I just fear that they're going to do something that's basically going to alienate fans again. I fear for them. It doesn't affect it, me, but I fear for them. Can I be the cynic here, though, and yeah. say it sure sounds like we had the same conversation last year about Jordan Walker and how the Cardinals were coming off a disappointing season, a disappointing finish, that you know just being wiped out of the playoffs by Phillies and. Not a whole lot going on in the off season. A lot of questions, like what are they doing? Where are they going? But man, they could really use a jolt. And Jordan Walker's that excitement. Jordan Walker coming out of, you know, skipping a level, and you know, the best prospect, one of their best prospects in baseball. Good spring, put him on the roster. None of this service time stuff. Put him on there. And it seems like we're at, we we had that same conversation. How that work out? Did it did it show up in excitement for the fan base? I don't I don't recall that. Well, it did early. I don't recall that. It, it did, did it? early. It, yeah, and then they sent him down. Okay. And All right, that that's kind of, fair. It, It's kind of like, okay, p- p- hit the brakes. Let's halt whatever momentum we might have been building. Uh, I also would I would also maintain, too, that th- there was a much longer buildup of anticipation for Walker than it has sure. been for Scott. So yeah, he's Walker, a lightning bolt. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's a that's a different thing. And, I agree. Uh, and uh, listen, I, I don't mean to be like the, the insufferable uh, old columnist or whatever, but I was writing all last spring about, um, you know, he, 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 it doesn't look like he can play right field and they didn't give him enough reps in the minors to play right, right field. And so I just wonder if they if this is the right thing to do, because they waited until, in, they waited until August of 2022 to actually put him in the min- in the outfield in the minor leagues, yeah, so they sort of, they they yeah. set they sort of set him up for failure defensively, and that became a really big deal. Um, yeah. So that that this does not apply to Victor Scott the second, and okay. he would he would be uh, he would be joining a team that an organization, the manager, the the president of baseball operations, 
they say defense has got to be a big priority this year because they can't have what they had last year. So I'm just holding them to what they say. I agree. I think you ought to. I, I think I was going at it from more of the angle that, like, you know, the fan base can be vocal. Um, certain segments of it can be vocal and say, well, we'll be energized. When if Victor Scott or prove us wrong and make us excited that Victor Scott and they'll just move on to the next thing, you know if he even if he's on the team then it's just they'll move on to the same thing the next thing I don't I don't know if he energizes a fan base um, in a way that moves tickets or changes the tone on X Twitter I think they just move on to the next thing to complain about. I think he would move tickets if he gets the chance and he sparks something early, but uh, that's easy to yeah, say now. Maybe. That's easy to say now, but um, maybe very I don't entertaining know. brand of baseball. Yeah, I've been you know covering Cardinals baseball one way or the other since 1985 uh, when I was asked to help Rick Hummel out, even though I was a football writer. Yeah. And, <laughs> Uh, Cardinals fans, uh, they've had a lot of happy times, even though uh, on Twitter people will say, well, no, no, the Cardinals have actually, they've been horrible for 25 years or whatever. You know, um, I think it's 125. Had, that's 125. right, yeah. They've had, they've had a lot of happy times, right? I, but I don't think, I don't know that the Cardinals fan base has ever been happier than the 80s with guys running around stealing bases, stealing hits. Sc- score yeah. on it, scoring on anything where it was humanly possible to score if they were on bases. I mean, how many managers have been asked about Whitey Ball? How many managers have has been put to him? You know, well, you, you know, you're gonna, you, you think you can try to steal more bases this year? I mean, the, 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 this is sort of like p- part of the, the the baseball DNA for fans in our town, even fans who weren't there, sure. but they know all about huh. it. You know, yeah, so sure. that would sort of wake up the echoes a little bit too. But maybe I'm getting Good carried point. away. I probably no, am. no. I think you're right. I mean, they had an entertaining game in Boston. And it was go go cards. Um, you know they they talked about it going in. They thought, all right, this is a chance. You know, there's a little, there's some things that the Red Sox do that you could take advantage of, and they did, and uh, they won the game that way. Uh, a little bit of a long, sometimes ugly game, um, but look, you know, Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn pulled off a double steal that went well. Um, you know, Jordan Walker wasn't safe, but <clears throat> run got in, which is the purpose, right? So right. You know, they did things like that, and they're going to do more things like that. And, um, I mean, Victor Scott the second just creates such havoc. And I get the comparisons to the 80s, Bernie. Um, but here's a question that I've asked a few times, um, both of Cardinal officials um, but also of my colleagues down here, is what does his on-base percentage have to be for him to be a not – not a starter, but a superstar. Like if he is a 380 on base guy, you're talking about a superstar. If he's a 350, is he? I mean, if he if he's on base that much and draws that much attention, and I'm not even talking about like batting average, so I'm just like talking about like not making outs and getting yeah, on base. That's right. Um, if he's a 380. He's one of the more dynamic players in the game. So can he be that? I, I find I find that conversation fascinating. I think you're right on. That often? I, yeah. Wow. I, I think you're right on. Um, and, you know, if you look at, again, there's – there's I would say there's been a progression, and this is only going by the minors, right? But there's been a progression, and um, – you know he's never had uh, w- even if we if we talk we talk about summer ball we talk about A level high A level double A uh, Arizona Fall League you know he's never had an on base percentage I think less than three fifty eight at any of yeah. those stops you know that's yeah, um, that's, that's heady stuff and he doesn't strike out no I mean not much see no, that's and he the other uh, hard. Th- that's yeah, and he, that's the other thing. People want to. You know, I've heard people even now, and I read stuff, maybe even nationally. It's like, well, you know, he doesn't really hit hit the ball with authority, and he's kind of going to be, you know, he'll be kind of a slap hit. No, 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 catch up. Try to catch up. I mean, yeah, scouts he's, and he's outrunning the yeah, yeah. Scouts yeah. in the Arizona Fall League were were almost like astonished by his power, like how quickly it came. Um, so no, yeah. I, I it's really interesting. But when you have a guy. 
And he, 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 you know, you go back to college at West Virginia and then you follow him all through the minor leagues. He puts the ball in play a lot. And so what yeah. happens when he puts the ball in play? It activates his speed, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And he puts the he ball could, in play hard. I yeah. Mean, like, you know, he, he tied up Carlos Correa, a really good fielder, just left him flat-footed. Um, the, you know, he hit a ball off a pitcher. And before that pitcher could really comprehend and go get the ricochet, he was safe. Um, there was a there was a story the other day that they were telling on the field about how um, he hit a ball down the line, down the right field line, I believe it was. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. It was down the right field line, right? And Stubby Clapp, the first base coach, was following the flight of the ball so that he could then give direction as to you know how the fielder was going to get there, whether the fielder was going to play it, whether or not Victor should go to second. Stubby looks, sees the ball there, measures where the outfielder is, and decides, okay, yeah, I'm going to send him. And in the process of that second, turns and sees that Victor's already halfway to second base. I mean, he's, I mean it, he has <laughs> game-changing speed, and he's become a better base runner. I suppose Mason Wynn, real quick, this spring. The two of them mm-hmm. have both become better base runners this spring. And... You know, you talk about having them eight, nine in your lineup, and then Brendan Donovan at the top. You're you're not putting any roadblocks in front of them, and it's away you go. Right. No, it's enticing. The idea of it is very enticing. Um, and I, I know that uh, all he can do is just keep keep doing his best. How, one one other thing, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you got uh, you got a ton of stuff to do. Um, it sounded like a nice breezy outing for Lance Lynn today. Uh, yeah, and, and as he joked, you know, at least I, you know, didn't get thrown. At least I didn't get thrown out of the bullpen. But he, uh, I guess, he's rounding into shape. No pun intended. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's Lance Lynn. He's going to go out there and chuck fastballs and cutters and sinkers, and he's going to work fast and he's going to be deceptive. And you know, hitters for at some point in time, people hitters are going to stop underestimating him, but they continue to go out there and just be foiled by him. Um, you know, he doesn't make any I, – I did ask him earlier this spring. I said, hey, have you ever just told a batter what's coming? Like, just stood there on the mound and say, hey, pal, like, I throw fastballs. You're going to get one. Here we go. <laughs> and he said no. And then and then he qualified. He goes, not, like, in a real big league game. <laughs> I was like, all right. Um, but, you know, he is – I mean, he's, he is going to help in a lot of ways with this team. And I know – like fans don't want to hear it if he has a four seven ERA, but that has so much value. Um, I've spent and I, and I know I know it's like it's hard to wrap your mind around, but the math of it is if you ballast and that guy is at league average, and that's your fourth starter, you're in a good spot. Um, there, there's no know, doubt. I mean, we look back at the o four o five team. And people kind of romance those teams. Well, a big part of those rotations with Jason Marquis and Jeff Supon providing, you know, just providing. Now, they were better. They were better. Um, you know, and then, of course, Supon had the great postseason. But part of it, that, too, was him just providing, getting them where they needed to be so that the offense could, you know, wake up and provide. Um, but it just was innings, innings, innings that make it go. And, you know, that that's what Lance Lynn is going to bring. He's going to give you high-calorie innings. Um, he's, he's the starch of the rotation, if you will. He'll be good. Yeah, Derek, uh, you and I are totally on the same wavelength when it comes to the, the rotation they've put together. I think people are underestimating it simply because they don't fully comprehend the value of innings. And I've I've backed that up as you know with just a, a bunch yeah. of stats that show it, that show even if you you get six innings from a starter, and it, it can't it doesn't even necessarily have to be a, like a great start. If you get six innings from mm-hmm. a starter, your record your winning percentage in those games is outstanding. But th- yeah. this one this this is one of those things that just I kind of like I kind of give up because we're we're close to the start of the season anyway. But I kind of give up. Because when you see uh, Ken Rosenthal like reaffirming this thing about their, you know, well they signed these guys and this ERA was this and this ERA and that, 
I mean, surely a Ken Rosenthal understands there is value in innings. I, I just – I get really frustrated by – it's like everybody made up their mind without taking a closer look of how a lot of innings – will make a huge difference for this team, this rotation. But they got their narrative. That's it. It's in the books. They're staying with yep. it. And I'm just like, you know, I'm tired of fighting about it. We'll just wait until the start of the season. You know, but it's it's yeah. it, it, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. With all the stuff that's available to sort of enlighten yourself with information, it's just, uh, I don't know. You can tell your friend's frustrated. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. That's one of the stories that I'm working on for the special section. And, you know, I mean, I, it, I've, I've talked with a lot of people about, you know, that. And, I mean, it boils down to that innings aren't sexy, but they're substantive. Innings don't get you paid, read. but they get you wins. And, I can't wait I mean, to read know, that. You, yep. You know me, Bernie. I mean, every year down here, I have asked Mo, I've said, hey, where are you going to get your innings from? You have. Last year was like, where are they going to come from? Because they, they weren't. And I got to be true to that question and go, all right, where are these innings? Oh, right. No, they've answered that. Yeah, they, they have. They know where their innings are going to come from. That's a heck of a place to start. And if you like projection models, projection models are rewarding that. Um, but if you like skepticism, then sure, it plays into that too. That's fine because cause the four ERA isn't cool, you know, and I get that. Yeah, and they're right, and then they're yeah. Every five days isn't cool either. And you know. I, I don't know that uh, other than you and me and maybe a few others, I, I don't know how many people have actually looked at Kyle Gibson's fielding independent ERA last season, yeah. or or noted that the Orioles actually had a worse defense than the Cardinals. That's hard to believe, but it's true. So and it you know, true. but no, nobody wants to look at that. It's they, they see the four seven three. There's a story behind the four seven three. But that would take some work yeah. to actually un- get the knowledge that tells you that that's not just the enti- that's not the entire story. So yeah, uh, uh, no, if you and I were teammates, then we'd be fighting this fight together. But we can fight it uh, somewhat independent of each other and still <laughs> uh, still see if we can yeah. we can get people to kind of kind of learn a couple things. And I know I sound arrogant. Derek does, and I do. So, well, listen, man. Uh, before you go, man. I want to I, I want to recommend. Uh, I, I'm going to dive in it tonight because today I was kind of running around work-wise and things. Um, you did this really wonderful, like just out of the blue in a good way, out of the red, out of the blue piece going 314 day. Here are three. Uh, here are the 314 reasons for 314's baseball club, the Cardinals. And it just covers all this stuff that's really, really fun. So I'm just going to recommend it because you. I know you put a hell of a lot into that. It's a – Fun, different story. It kind of breaks up the routine in spring training. Really, really very well done. I can't wait to dive into it later. I got to write about, you know, what uh, Silver King and uh, Wee <laughs> Willie Stubhoff. Silver so, I mean, King. When else do you get to do that? But also, That's right. Albert Pujols, Scott Rowland, who strangely had uh, one of those 3 1 4 seasons. He did? Oh man, yeah, you're gonna, you're, you're going to have yeah. a you're going to have a hundred delight. You may have three hundred fourteen delights in that story. So I look forward to it. Man. Yeah. yeah, you uh, good luck yeah. with your transcribing. Thanks for giving us some t- time. I uh, we appreciate it as always. You bet. All, right, All right, that's yeah, our friend. Thanks, Bernie. Have a great day. Bye bye. That's our friend Derek Gould here on five ninety The Fan KFNS. Jim, you still getting the uh, tornado warnings out there? Currently? We've had a few uh, here and there. I can just tell the people if you're in the northern areas like Spanish Lake, Alton, going over to the Illinois side there, you got tornado warnings. And I can also say we got one in the southern part of our listening area right now, Waterloo, Valmyra, Myerstown, and Illinois. Uh, just be aware. Take cover. This short, short small cells are just kind of rolling through the area. So that's what I can. Yeah, I, I uh, in fact, it's it, there's it's ringing again now. Um, while I was talking to Derek, um, I'm on this uh, weather alert mm-hmm. network. I believe it is the National Weather Service. It's not some fly by night thing. And so if there's a torna- tornado warning, I get a call telling me it's a tornado warning, telling me go go to the basement uh, or seek shelter. So, uh, with that in mind, no, I'm not going to vacate the radio show, but 
um, it's just weird. You're doing a radio show, and I'm on the top floor, and people are saying, you're getting the National Weather Service actually calling my smartphone saying, seek shelter now. And I'm like, well, no, I got a, you know, I got a show to do. Well, you're in good shape for now. But if it does get bad, trust me, I have, which Dave and I have been working on stuff while you've been doing your thing here to uh, yeah. move in other directions if we need to. But we're all good in where we're at. But those in the northern and southern areas uh, of our listening area, just, just be aware and well, take shelter if you need to. Where I live in, I guess you call it West St. Louis, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let you know if, if something tears off our roof, Jim. I'll keep going, though. I'll let you know. Okay? <laughs> I, I shouldn't gotcha. joke. I shouldn't joke. 